find What makes us come alive A sacrifice of praise A city on a hill Surrender to your will Your glory on display Your glory on display Awesome in this place Jesus you are awesome in this place
the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Good to be with you again today. I hope you're keeping well, staying safe, and I can't wait uh, to share with you tonight. And and this is going to be kind of interactive because this is basically we're, we're trying to really establish Bible study and, and take it away from this kind of boring concept and, and bring it back to life where the Bible study is not something like just reading an old historical book. There's life in it. I just want to uh, frame that real quick right now. So some of you might be like, well, how, how is the Bible alive? How can you have a relationship with your Bible? Well, actually, if you go right back to Genesis, um, it says in Genesis that God spoke the world into existence. So, so it was with a word. And we've heard that, some of us have heard that, let there be light and there was light. And so words are powerful. They're creative. They, 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 they start things most, most all communication often begins with a word. Um, and so then we look at John, 10, John 1 and 1 in the New Testament. And, and it says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. And, and, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So the word, word actually, what they're talking about there in John is... They're talking about Jesus, that Jesus was the word that became flesh. So he already was, he already existed. He already uh, was there from the foundations of the earth, but he became known to us in the flesh um, as Jesus in the form of God's son. Uh, And so there's power in God's word. Jesus, just as Jesus walked the earth uh, as the word, becoming flesh the word still exists as we read it in in the form of the scriptures the bible says that all scripture is god breathed and 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 can be used to bring life and and realign us and move us forward and so the scripture is alive and so we want to talk about a a method that we're using as the church 
and maybe you've never done this before, you've never read your Bible or don't really understand where to start, well, we're, we're going to adopt a, a method called SOAP, and this is for Bible study. Uh, the SOAP method stands for S is Scripture, uh, O is obser- observation, so when you're observing the, the words, what stands out, and when you find something that stands out, application is how do I apply that practically to my life because unless it, it helps your Monday and your Tuesday and your Wednesday, uh, it's really of no use. And lastly, we pray, we invite the Holy Spirit to come and to move as we read the Bible, as we um, get into the scriptures, we ask the Holy Spirit to move and to quicken our spirits and, and to enlighten and to show us things that maybe we couldn't see with our natural eyes. And so before, before we start and get into this um, this soap, uh, let's go ahead and pray. God, we thank you for your presence. We ask, Holy Spirit, come as we read the scriptures. God, enlighten us, enlighten our hearts, enlighten our spirits, and help us to see what you see, and help us all to move forward in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. And, and you know, the beautiful thing about this is that each person reading this same scripture might get something completely different, because maybe what you're going through through right now is is different to somebody else and so you need a different uh, a different side uh, to to the scripture that we're reading uh, to encourage you to help you to move forward and to 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 realign you in whatever way that needs to be so first thing I'll just talk a little bit about uh, the context so this is right before Jesus is about to die and obviously we're in Holy Week and Jesus is on the way to the cross and this is not too long before it and, and we find Jesus is has been meeting with all kinds of different people, all kinds of different scenarios and here he finds himself in a Pharisee's house and before we start, a Pharisee is a person who is very judgmental, they follow the Jewish traditions and laws and even created more laws on top of those laws. And, and so they probably weren't the most attractive person to be around, especially if you had some problems uh, or, or if you've made some mistakes in your life. You don't want to be around a Pharisee because they'll just, they'll shun you, they'll look down upon you. Some of you are thinking about someone right now. Do not tag them. <laughs> um, but you know, the reality is we all can be a Pharisee. We all can be judgmental towards one another. And so we've got to be careful that that doesn't become us. Um, so anyhow, here, here it is. Jesus is here. And uh, I'm going to pick up in Luke 7. I've got my laptop in front of me. And we're going to pick up here. If you've got a Bible, go ahead and open it or open it up in your, uh, your app. And let's really get into the Word. This is so important that we learn to do this by ourselves without a church community. This is just you and God. And uh, you can become a self-feeder rather than having to rely on other people all the time. I'm not saying those things are bad. They're complementary. They're to help inspire you to get back in the Word uh, and to receive. And you can actually have the same experience, if not better, by yourself with God than, than, than you would uh, in, in a church community. Um, I know that's the same for me. I can worship just the same at home by myself. Actually, sometimes better because there's less distractions. Um, So let's go ahead and pick up here in Luke 7, verses 6. Um, It says, One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to eat with him. So Jesus went into the Pharisee's house and sat at the table. Now you've got to understand, Jesus is probably well aware that the Pharisees are probably going to try and catch him out. It's just how they think they're going to probably judge him, try and correct him, or something like that. It goes on to say, A sinful woman in the town of Portadown, I'm only kidding, in the town learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. So she brought an alabaster jar of perfume and stood behind Jesus at his feet, crying. It sounds very dramatic and very emotional. First off, this woman, observation, this woman probably, the Pharisee's house isn't probably her best place to be right now, but she's went because she's drawn to Jesus. It's as if she doesn't care what people think. So she brought it um, crying. She began to wash his feet with her tears and she dried them with her hair, kissing them many times and rubbing them with the perfume. When the Pharisee asked Jesus to come to his house, saw this, he thought to himself, if Jesus were a prophet, 
he would know that the woman touching him is a sinner. Jesus said to the Pharisee, because he obviously knew what uh, they were thinking, Simon, I have something to say to you. Simon said, teacher, tell me. Jesus said, two people owed owed money to the same banker. One owed 500 coins and the other owed 50. They had no money to pay what they owed. But the the banker both told them they did not have to pay him. Which person will love the banker more? So we had 500 in this hand and 50 here. And they both represent two different people and they don't have to pay it back. So Jesus is asking which are going are going to appreciate and love the banker more for, for the gesture and, and for giving them of their debt. Simon the Pharisee answered, I think it would be the one who owed the most money because he's been forgiven of more debt. Um, Jesus said to Simon, you are right. Then Jesus turned towards the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? When I came into your house, you gave me no water for my feet. But she washed my feet with her tears and dried them with her hair. You give me no kiss of, of breeding, but she, she, she has been kissing my feet since I came in. You did not put oil on my head, but she poured perfume on my feet. I tell you that her many sins are forgiven, so she has showed great love. But the person who is forgiven only a little will only love a little. So he's saying that... that the less you're forgiven, the less you'll love, most likely. Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. The people sitting at the table began to say that among themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? Who gives him the authority? So Jesus said to the woman, because you believed, you're saved from your sin. Go, what's this, in peace. Go in peace. So, oh, Observation and application. I've mentioned a few little observations that I've had there. So the first thing that I noticed and that spoke to me personally, because this is about what is the word saying to me, you'll read it and maybe get something completely different. Number one, desperate people want to be around Jesus. This, This woman was desperate and she entered into a room of judgment. She entered nearly into the land's den, but because Jesus was present, she was willing to go through uh, the judgment in order to get to his feet. And so this is interesting to me because it it tells me, Phil, sometimes uh, you've got to to forget about what everyone else is thinking and everyone else is doing and just do what is right and what is going to get you to God's feet, to Jesus' feet because that's where your answers are found. If you keep worrying about what people think, it will stop you from entering the house. It will stop you from entering the room. It will stop you from from receiving uh, forgiveness. It, it It will remove the possibility of being debt free in your soul. And so that's the first thing that kind of stood out to me. And so I've got to learn that sometimes when I'm holding on to things or trying to be too cool or trying to pretend I've got it all together, if I really want to be free, if I really want to be at peace, I've got to let go of my pride. I've got to let go of caring what people think and do what is right. Can I get an amen? So, So maybe that's something that will encourage you as well. Secondly, Jesus talked about a financial debt as an example for spiritual debt. So this, this um, kind of helps me to understand personally that sometimes when, when I'm feeling um, sad or, or when I'm feeling uneasy or I'm feeling not at peace or there's turmoil or there's fear or there's things which are not the fruit of the Holy Spirit or not God's best for my life, it tells me that that's another example for me being in debt. That's an example of me feeling probably full of shame or maybe I've made a mistake and I don't want to say sorry or ask for forgiveness. I'm feeling it's burning me. It's causing me to maybe kick out at other people. It's causing me to get mad at loved ones. It's causing me to push people that actually care for me away. I have to conclude and be aware that maybe I'm in debt. Maybe, Phil, you need your debts paid. Maybe, Phil, you need peace back. 
maybe feel you need to let go of what people think and stop trying to please people or look a certain way and you need to get to the feet of Jesus. You need to get in the word. You need to do a soap. You need to pray again and realign your thoughts and pay the debt that your soul has because you're hungry, Phil. Um, and deal with that so that when you do, peace will come. Not just peace, but as the woman experienced, love came. She was so compassionate. She was full of love and compassion. It didn't say in the scriptures that she was judging the Pharisees, but they were judging her. And so there was something so much more complete about her than the Pharisees. The Pharisees were frustrated. The Pharisees were angry. The Pharisees were, were trying to figure it all out in their head, but their hearts were hard. And so I'm learning from this scripture that Phil, keep your heart soft. And when you keep your heart soft, then your love will stay high. And, and, and third, I see uh, forgiveness is a powerful tool for love. Is that when, when the, this lady who had made mistakes, who had been broken, who had uh, probably done things her own way in her life, she came to the end of herself and found out that Jesus was there and she became so desperate. Um, but, but knowing that God was full and Jesus was full of grace and truth, that he stood for truth. It wasn't just do what you want and, uh, and uh, anything goes. It was, no, there's, there, there are ways of doing things. There are sin and things which aren't sin. There, there is a definite line for right and wrong. There is morality, but there's also grace. And that grace will never give up on you. It will never give up on me. And so what I'm hearing right now as I read through that is God, God will never give up on you. Jesus came because God loved you and he wanted to pay your debt and he wanted to free you from the burden of your sins and your mistakes. And he wanted to have a, a continual relationship with you, Phil, so that you make less mistakes. Can I get an amen? And so that you, you can love better. And so this woman, the first thing we see she done, as uh, she realized that she had experienced grace and truth, was she came in and she put oil on his head, she poured perfume on his feet, uh, uh, and um, she showed great, uh, great compassion and interaction. See, maybe right now in my life, there's areas that I've been hardened because of hurt, and, and I've I've become judgmental because of mistakes that I've made or other people have made. And it's telling me that maybe, Phil, you need to forgive some of those people so that you can love again. Whoa, that's good. You can forgive. The Holy Spirit's speaking to me and saying, Phil, you can actually love better when you receive forgiveness for yourself. And when you receive forgiveness for yourself, Phil, you'll actually be, be a lot more freer in giving forgiveness out for others because the people who probably didn't receive true forgiveness for themselves were the Pharisees. And because of that, they didn't forgive others and they were judgmental and they just looked, people, looked at people through, uh, through truth based rather than grace and truth. Oh, this is good. I love this. This is helping me right now as I speak this. And it can help you too if you get in and do a soap in your, in your, uh, in your quiet time as well. And lastly, I'll finish with this. Peace. Peace is a byproduct of forgiveness. Right now, some of you might be having uh, a lack of peace in the house. You might be having a lack of peace in your marriage, in, in relationships, relationships with God and yourself. Maybe there's a forgiveness issue. Phil, maybe the reason you don't have peace in certain areas is because you haven't forgiven yourself. Maybe I haven't uh, forgiven um, so, some things from the past and, and if I want peace to be restored, I've got to forgive. But, but forgiveness starts with Jesus and the cross. And as we come up to, to Good Friday, we're reminded uh, of the cross. We're reminded of the power of the cross. That the power of the cross is that it brings resurrection power. Resurrection life. Resurrection of peace in our life. A resurrection of joy. A resurrection um, of goodness and of mercy. And, uh, and so let's, But the central theme is be in relationship with the word. And so I, I, I've got from this, I've been encouraged as I've looked through Luke 7. I hope you will be as you go ahead and look through some scriptures. Maybe try Luke 7 yourself and see what the Holy Spirit tells you uh, through. So, so before we finish, I just want to do communion uh, as we come up to Good Friday. Uh, we, we remember what Jesus done. 
he literally there was a holy week and, and where he uh, was beaten and and humiliated and, and it became desperate measures but listen it was only a part of the process and the same for me and the same for you as we go through life there will be seasons and there will be times and maybe we're in preparation right now in regards to what the government's saying for, for some hard times but listen it, it's it's just a season it's just for a time and let's react well and let's be filled with the peace of God and let's be filled with the power of God and the goodness of God and let's forgive those who have hurt us and received the free gift of salvation. Maybe right now you need to do that in your house, in your home and receive Jesus as your Lord. He's a good person for the desperate. He's a good person. He's attractive to be around. He's not judgmental. He's full of grace and full of truth and he will lead you into all freedom in Jesus' name. So let's go ahead and if you've got any elements at home, it can just be juice. The most important part is that it represents what Jesus done on the cross and so this is just juice it's it's not wine it's just juice and uh, the you can just get a piece of bread or, or something that represents bread uh, it's uh, and so we're just going to take the, the bread or whatever you use as a symbol and this is representation of, of Christ's body that was broken to give us eternal life forevermore debts are wiped clean and we have we have the ability to keep getting those debts of our soul and of our lives continually renewed uh, and cleaned up on a regular basis then. The juice, which represents his body and the blood that was shed at the cross. And so let's, let's just pray. God, we thank you for communion. We thank you that we do this in remembrance of you as we come up to Easter and to Good Friday. God, we remember what you went through. And it wasn't just a physical ordeal. It was a spiritual war. It was unseen. It was something that we couldn't necessarily see in the natural in, in this generation. But we know that, that there's an unseen realm. There's an unseen war. And we thank you, God, you've dealt with those things and you bring peace to us. In Jesus' name. Hey guys, a few quick updates just before we finish and we go into chat room. Uh, it's been going well too. But uh, so we got kids on this uh, Sunday at 10 a.m. and uh, that's continuing to go well. Thank you for sharing and telling your friends about it. Anyone's welcome to use that resource. Uh, then also Sunday, we have our Sunday services at 11 and 6:30. Continue to share. Continue to tag. Why? Because people are getting saved as we share. People are coming to faith. Like God is moving. And every time you share, uh, hit that share button or tag someone, it, it gives people the chance of hearing the good news of Jesus Christ. So thank you for doing so. And even we've suggested if you want to keep your feet uh, not filled with church stuff, you can share it while it's on and then delete if that annoys you. Uh, so thank you for doing that. And lastly, a uh, giving. Uh, funny, you know, it'd be so easy to, to fear giving going down, but actually giving has went up. Why? Because I believe there's been a bunch of people that have the revelation of stewardship, of putting God first in your finances. And I truly believe God is blessing those people and uh, God is about to work miracles and open up doors and, and just bring peace really in that area. So thank you. Because of it, we give our biggest tithe to date to the Craig Avon Food Bank. We were able to give £600. Um, so thank you and, and listen it's a privilege I can't wait to give more I can't wait for God to put uh, uh, more ideas and initiatives on our hearts so we can do more in the community I've already got a few things lined up so it's just a privilege life is short and we want to make a difference while we're here so thank you for your faithfulness the future is exciting and uh, we're going to just pray our way through this hard season right now in regards to the coronavirus praying for your loved ones and anyone that's uh, got anyone that's sick and uh, please keep us up to date with prayer requests and praise reports uh, as we go through this together in jesus name Amen.